Welcome to the Game of Thrones in Boston neurosurgery style. What we have prepared for you is an epic contest of all the great programs of Boston. Please sit back, relax, and at the end, let us know who most deserves to sit in the Game of Thrones Iron Throne. In the Augustus year of 1912, Harvey Cushing became the first surgeon in chief at the Brigham. We still have Dr. Cushing's original bookcase with some of his books, as well as the medical records from 1912 till 1932. So the program at the Brigham and the program at Children's Hospital were united together from Dr. Cushing's time until the mid 2000s. At that time, the programs separated financially, administratively, and in terms of faculty, but we continue to share the residency program as well as educational achievements such as grand rounds and conferences. I was attracted to the Brigham in 2012, luckily 100 years after Dr. Cushing started here. That was a tremendous honor. What wowed me here was seeing his old operating room, his old office. I thought actually his office was the office I was inheriting. I only discovered later that that was not truly Cushing's office, but Cushing's office was somewhere else in the hospital. Our department was formed 80 years ago, and our first chair of neurosurgery was Dr. Mixter. Dr. Mixter's major contribution was the discovery of the intervertebral disc, which is really the predominant operation performed by neurosurgeons today. Following Dr. Mixter was the era of William Sweet and Dr. James White. Uh, these two practitioners focused on the practice of neurosurgery as it relates to pain. Following Drs. Sweet and White, uh, Dr. Zervis took over as chair of the department. Dr. Zervis was an eminent civic uh, figure here in Boston. He was the president of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, but also a noted neurosurgeon in transphenoidal neurosurgery. And my immediate predecessor to the chair at Mass General was Dr. Bob Martuza. Robert Martuza was a graduate of the program and the fifth chair of neurosurgery at Mass General. Early in his faculty years in the laboratory, Bob Martuza developed the concept of oncolytic viral therapy for glioma. One of the unique aspects of Harvard Medical School is that it is very decentralized. We have outstanding neurosurgical departments, in fact, four departments of neurosurgery at HMS. It was only a few years ago that these departments came together in collaboration to create Harvard's first department of neurosurgery. In Boston, we at Mass General will retain this throne. In the late 1920s, Harvey Cushing had already done over 150 pediatric tumor operations and realized that pediatric neurosurgery really needed to be its own specialty. At that point, he recruited his protege, Frank Ingraham, to start the world's first pediatric neurosurgery program at Boston Children's Hospital. Ingraham subsequently recruited Donald Matson, and together they wrote the first textbook of pediatric neurosurgery. Matson was chair for about four years after Ingraham when he un had an untimely death from Jakob Kreutzfeld. That happened to occur while he was the president of the AANS. After Donald Matson, Dr. John Shilato took over as the lead in pediatric neurosurgery, followed by Dr. Michael Scott, who remains on our faculty to this day. I became the chair in 2016, in 2004, it became clear that the kingdom of Boston Children's Hospital and Brigham and Will Women's Hospital were too big for one leader. It was at that time that Dr. Michael Scott became the chair of the newly formed Department of Neurosurgery at Boston Children's Hospital, and Peter Black remained the chair of neurosurgery at Brigham and Women's Hospital. But there's only one program that's not considered number one in its field, and that's Boston Children's Hospital. I will be on the Iron Throne. Our program is the newest in Boston. We partnered with um, the folks at Boston Medical Center uh, and established a brand new residency program, uh, the first in Boston in many years uh, in 2016. We're very hopeful that we'll be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with our older brethren uh, in the years to come. Well, I was recruited from uh, Mount Sinai in New York in 2011 to come to the Beth Israel uh, to establish a residency program. Um, it required a significant amount of uh, building from the ground up, um, but that's sort of, sort of thing that I enjoy. Um, and it culminated in our ability to 
uh, have a residency program uh, and be awarded one in 2016. Long ago, there was a, a gentleman named Nick Zervis, who was the chief of neurosurgery at the Beth Israel, um, and then he suddenly left. I've always wondered what happened to him. Uh, Peter Varnke uh, specifically uh, preceded me. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to uh, build the program to where it is today with the, uh, the help of many great colleagues. In 1932, Gilbert Horax, who trained under Harvey Cushing at the Brigham, uh, came to Leahy Clinic to start the Department of Neurosurgery. Uh, one year uh, following that, uh, Dr. Poppin uh, joined uh, the uh, Leahy Clinic. Charlie Fager was recruited to join the Leahy Department of Neurosurgery and became chair in 1963. Charlie Fager um, uh, recruited uh, several key individuals in the department, including Ed Tarlov in 1977, who was responsible for uh, focusing on posterior fossa uh, tumors, and Stephen Friedberg, who was uh, responsible for uh, developing transphenoidal uh, approaches uh, to the brain. And in 1984, Steve uh, Friedberg became the chair of neurosurgery. In 2005, Reese Cosgrove became the fifth chairman of neurosurgery at the Leahy Clinic. In 2011, um, I became the chair of neurosurgery. And uh, in the last uh, several years, we've expanded our training uh, program now, training three residents and fellows a year. I'd like to remind everyone that Leahy Neurosurgery is growing and that we will ultimately sit on the Iron Throne and also remember winter is coming. In 1951, uh, neurosurgery became a department at Tufts Medical Center and Bert Silverstone was the first chairman. Ben Stein took over in 1971. Uh, Dr. Stein was chairman for nine years and at Tufts he did a tremendous amount of AVM surgery and Bill Shukart came to become the chair in 1981. Uh, Dr. Shukart uh, was perhaps best known for his development of the transcolosal approach to the anterior ventricular system but also became a tremendous leader in neurosurgery. Mike Scott got his start uh, at Tufts and developed his pediatric practice before moving to Children's Hospital. Uh, Alan Cohen uh, built his early pediatric neurosurgery practice there. Uh, Cal Post under Ben Stein developed his pituitary surgery practice at Tufts before uh, moving to New York City. And also uh, Volker Sontag uh, trained at Tufts. John Wilson, who's the upcoming president of the WNS, also trained at Tufts underneath uh, Bill Shukart and he'll be the president of WNS uh, next year. I became chairman in 2005, and since then, neurosurgery um, has continued to grow and develop. Our plan is to let the Harvard Game of Thrones people fight it out with each other, and once they're done killing themselves, then Tufts will rise to the top, and I'll sit on the Iron Throne. In 1967, Dr. Ed Spatz was named chair of the Department of Neurologic Surgery and the chair of the Department of General Surgery at that time. I was appointed chair of the Department of Neurologic Surgery at Boston Medical Center in 2011. And since then, we've made some significant progress. We've established an accredited residency in neurologic surgery in partnership with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center under the leadership of Dr. Ron Alterman. We've established a robust uh, research partnership with the engineering department at MIT. We have also repopulated the uh, faculty uh, at Boston Medical Center, uh, including the arrival of several very young uh, and talented neurosurgeons from this region. In the early 1960s, the state of Massachusetts decided that it needed to have a public medical school. After years of debate, a decision was made to establish that school in the city of Worcester, Massachusetts. Neurosurgery did not start a residency until 1991. Vivian Tabar, who is the chair of neurosurgery at Memorial Sloan Kettering, was one of its graduates. In 1998, the medical school hospital merged with UMass Memorial, and as a result, several of the neurosurgeons left and the residency program was lost. For 20 years, no residents were trained at the University of Massachusetts. In 2016, having served on the faculty at Brigham and Women's Hospital for 13 years, I moved to Worcester to reestablish the residency program. We had just accepted our first resident. UMass is much like the Targaryen family from the Game of Thrones. We were thought to have been extinguished, but we were not. We will sit on the Iron Throne.
Well, that was very impressive. But if you ask me, the clear winner is the patience of Boston. At the end of the day, the throne was destroyed. The message being that all the, f all the struggle and fight to obtain the, the throne was, was unnecessary and that the real goal, the real goal could be achieved not sitting on the throne, but by recognizing that no one needs to sit on the throne. Okay, stand by and action. In the Augustus year of 1912, Harvey Cushing became the first surgeon in chief at the Brigham. Dr. Uh, Cushing. And then we'll pick it up. Have you repeat that first at the Brigham? And then we'll continue. Stand by. And repeat at the Brigham. Action. At the Brigham. Dr. Cushing. Oh, one more time. 